Welcome to our whiteboard series. The intent of this initiative is to explain the complex technical concepts and myths with a simple whiteboarding approach. Today, we'll talk about the key difference between network firewall and a firewall. Let's start with the basics. What is a firewall? It is just a filter sits between a private internal network and the public internet. Its primary purpose is to allow the legitimate traffic and deny the illegitimate traffic. Broadly speaking, there are two kind of firewalls. One is networking firewall or the network firewall, which we historically call it as a firewall. What it does it filters the traffic based on three key aspects. One, IP address. Second one, port. And the third one, ACL, access control list. The intent is to secure your network from any sort of a network level attack. To give an example, man in the middle attacks and privilege escalations. Another one is the app firewall, which is historically called as web application firewall or WAF. It filters the traffic based on the application architectures. The intent of this specific application firewall is to protect your applications from any sort of a business logic abuse. The key examples could be credit card abuses and session hijacking. Let's let's deep dive into those specific business logic abuses to understand why we really need a firewall, even though I have a network firewall. When you log into any web application, most of the web apps assign a unique identifier for your session. You log into a particular web app and it identifies or assigns a session ID, which we can call it as a cookie. The objective of this specific session ID is to provide a frictionless experience. For example, you don't need to log in again and again for each and every pages on the same web app. And to provide a personalized experience based on your browsing patterns and the times used for targeted ads as well. So far so good. But let's imagine the same business logic abused by the hackers. How they can do? They can hijack the particular session to get the session ID and then they can access the same application with the hijack session ID that is one. In this case, the hacker can perform the same activities that you could perform, right? It's, it's a kind of a impersonification. Let's talk about the second one, SQL injections. I'm pretty sure you noticed all the websites these days rely on one or the other database. To pull the dynamic content based on your request and the language used for the database interaction is SQL structured query language. As a legitimate user, you would be passing your username and password. Assume that the app expect you to uh, enter the username and password. You would be providing username for example, right? But so far so good. But the same username field can be abused by the hackers to pass the SQL query something like select start from table one so in this case what can happen if the app is not built with right level of user input validation then the SQL query end up like returning all the 
records in that database which means you should be able to get to know all the usernames and their attributes let's talk about the third scenario the credit card abuse most of the e-com websites they provide a way for the legitimate users to transact through the credit cards right you basically leverage the credit card to perform the transaction so that you can get the relevant services from the merchants that's the typical way it works but think about a situation where a hacker could get to know the credit card information either could be through the atm skimming that's one of the approach often the hackers follow or could be through the data breach approaches right one of the other approach would help them to get to know a lot of credit card like information in an illegitimate manner then what hackers would do of course they may not be able to validate it is belongs to a particular user rather what they do they leverage the same information to perform some kind of a trial and error approach what he's going to do is going to check each and every information by making a transaction on the same credit card functionality and then he can figure out out of this information one is legitimate uh, credit card information then the hacker would finalize okay this is the right information and then they can use those validated information to get the dollar or the economic value from the merchants but completely in an illegitimate manner right so that that's where we are talking about a business logic abuse here if you look at the legitimate user you and me we are going to transact with the merchants but the illegitimate user i mean the hacker is going to do a trial and error to validate the stolen credit card information but at the end he can also get the economic value from the same merchants merchant but the merchant will not get to know any of these things that's the business logic abuse we are talking about okay these are the key issues how do you select a best or appropriate app firewall unlike the networking infrastructure apps are going through a lot of changes these days maybe because of uh, the agility and we are hearing a situations where our apps are getting changed every week then it's hard to manually then it's hard to manually change those rules or else you will end up like blocking the legitimate traffic so what we need is a way to automatically fingerprint or automatically scan the apps for potential changes made and then recommend the relevant signatures based on the risk exposure of the framework used in that particular app often we notice the uh, practical nuances of apps owned by a separate team and the security posture responsibilities belong to a separate team in that case unless you have a ability to automatically scan the apps but it has to be in an continuous manner that's very important it should not be a one time effort it has to be a continuous activity that's the one criteria that you should consider when you choose the app firewall the second criteria that i would suggest is around the unified solution if you look at the economic value of app for any customers irrespective of their business nature and irrespective of their business size hackers continue to explore new and new attack vectors to exfiltrate the data that's where the traditional app security approach of wap elevated to other capabilities like ddos bot and so on so what you need is the ability to have a orchestrated solution that can talk to each other that's very important so that you should be able to ensure the consistent security posture across your app landscape 
which you can only do when the tools like a bot and DOS and uh, VAP can talk to each other, which you can only do if a vendor provides these capabilities as a unified solution on a single platform. So look for a solution capability that are built on a platform which provides a comprehensive way of protecting your apps across all of these attack vectors, be it a vulnerability exploits through VAP or the resource exhaustion attacks through DOS mitigation tools or the business logic abuse problems through bot mitigation solutions. Make sure that you look for a unified solution. That's very important. Hope this helps and I'm pretty sure like you would like to share what was most useful for you from this session. In that way, we should be able to come back to you with it and another interesting um, story in the next whiteboard series. Before we wrap up, I want to finish with one thought. Our intent of this exercise is to make sure that the security complexities simplified. How do we do that? We make sure to provide the functionalities which are easy to follow and easy to consume. Security simplified. Thank you.